everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Two Dudes Podcast, episode number 96. I'm Rick. That's Kevin. What's good, man? What's going on? Oh, man. Just trying to get through this snow. I keep looking out the window and it looks like there's more and more. Um, to be fair, it's a little more windy out there than yeah. normal. So most of it is a lot of snow drifts. And that's why it looks like it's more than it is. It might look in some spots like we got six to eight inches, but I think we only got four or five. Yeah, we got maybe. They said we got between two to five. It don't look like it, but I ain't out there measuring either. You need to get you a snowblower. <laughs> uh, I'm good. I mean, I didn't have to go out there for too long. I mean, I split it because of how cold it is. You know, I, I ain't wanting to get out there and just go from start to finish. If I'm starting to get cold. I'm going to come in and warm up. And then I'll go back out. I'm starting to finish get the shit over with. And I say you need to get a snowblower, and I got one, and I didn't use it because I just wanted to – it was a good workout to shovel. Yeah. That, that's also a plus. Your back going to be feeling it in the morning, though. Yeah, but then at the same time, I, I don't know. my. I guess my mindset with a snowblower is it needs to be more snow than a couple of inches. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, if I feel like I don't want it to be working harder than it needs to be. Then also, with it being windy outside, you know, I don't need that shit blowing back. Ah, that's true. Like, I got one. I may sell it. I think I may just get one that got a battery to it. Because my whole thing is plugging it up. It's just, after getting it, I think it's a lot more hassle with it having to, than if I got one that's battery charged. Yeah. yeah. Now, um... <sighs> You said that they've already canceled school for tomorrow down your way? Yep. Well, as far as my district, my yep. district canceled. We are waiting to get word up this way. Uh, but in all likelihood, I ain't going nowhere tomorrow. Uh-huh. You know, enjoy your off day. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I was telling Heather, I've got vacation time built up if I need it. Oh, well. Uh, sick time, PTO, whatever I want to use. Um, I'm I'm not gonna risk life or limb, or mess around, and get stuck out somewhere, you know. So no, I get it. <clears throat> it's better to err on the side of caution, and uh, take that extra day. And yeah. if these kids go to school Friday, I'll be surprised. Yeah, that would be weird to be off a of Wednesday and Thursday, and then they make y'all go back Friday. But I can see that happening because okay. these schools, they have a set amount of snow days that they have, and mm -hmm. they they don't want to use them if they can avoid it because they don't want any makeup days. That is true. <clears throat> so how's the uh, ride situation going? You get that taken care of? It's in the shop. Uh, water pump. That's what it was. It was a water pump. But what's crazy, uh, about, I guess you could say three years ago, when I went to Firestone to get my car, like I feel like something was wrong with it. They looked at the back, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I told you about it. Brake line got redone. Brakes, caliber, all this stuff got redone. Cost me like $1,600. I had to get a, a, a Firestone card. Um, yeah, I remember that. So you you should, well, you would know then. A caliber should last forever in a day. Am I right or wrong? It should last a pretty long time, yeah. Tell me why they told me my caliber wasn't working on the passenger side, I think, in the back. Mm. To where my brake light kept coming off or it's fluid. It kept, you know, I'm thinking every time my brake fluid needs. So I put in there thinking nothing of it. Did it probably maybe three times in the past month. Didn't know my caliber was out. I'm like, there's no way that much should have went out in three years. And it just hit three years. So really, it was like two years of some change. That's all. So while well, I was talking to a friend of mine, her boyfriend was like, problem is, they probably charged you for a new one, but gave you a refurbished one. Mm. Uh, but you know the thing about it, you can't prove it. You can't go down and be like, man, I paid all this money in. So all said and done, $1,200 is what it's going to cost to get everything done. 
And I have to tell myself, that's cheaper because it's from a shop versus going to a chain where that could be another 1300 on top of that. Yeah. So, you know, I take it with a grain. It's all just kind of irritating because I created debt that I prob that the money didn't justify the means if I'm having to replace the caliber three years later. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, but so, that's how they get you, man. Yeah. And I have to remind myself that the Calvers, the Firestone, the Midas, they're mechanics by trade, but they're not a mechanic to where they're not just going to, oh, you know, we need to change two spark plug wires. You know, boom, boom. They're set up to where we got to change all six. We can't just change two, you know? So it's one of those type of things. But it's like, you know, it is what it is. Now, you mentioned that you got a good workout by uh, shoveling that snow. How have the uh, personal trainer workouts been going? Uh, it's going good. You know, uh, I know I've, I've probably lost inches more than weight so far. So I'm, I'm good with that. You know, that's the thing. The weight will come. Um, and the inches will happen. The first thing is, how are you feeling? Because if you're feeling better, that's the determination of, you know, what track you're on. So how are yeah, you feeling? I'm definitely feeling better. I'm, uh, ability to walk and not get tired is better. See, you know, yeah. My right knee, weight or no weight, is always going to be a problem. Because I'm back to broken and it wasn't rehab properly it is gonna be a problem and i'm good with that whatever but overall i definitely feel better like like i said i did the shoveling didn't take no break you know the back will get better as i lose weight but overall i'm definitely in a better physical spot now than i was four or five months ago cool that's what it's all about for real um Shoot, I'm, I've been working out consistently for maybe just a couple weeks now, and I'm just getting back into the swing of things. And I want to say into February, I'll probably pick back up the running again. But, you know, my old tired bones don't feel like going out when it's 10 degrees. So I'm going to – Nah. No, nah, he never, never put limit. I mean, never uh, put a cap on it. Um, when it's cold like that, you got to be smart. You old, you know, nah, you can I'm, freeze up as soon as you step outside. I ain't that old. And remember I this, walk. wherever I am, you're going to be. So, I mean, it's all good. Um, I am, I am in good enough shape where I know if I had to run three miles today, I could still do it without stopping. So, that's yeah, so you that's need a not a problem. treadmill or a bike for those cold days. I don't do treadmills. I said or a bike. Okay, yeah, because a, a treadmill, and if you're talking about indoor bike, I don't do those either. I have to literally be going somewhere when I'm running, walking, or bicycling. Uh, so I prefer outside and maybe – one of these days, I will have to break down and finally get a treadmill. But as long as I can go outside, I will do that. And uh, true story, a lot of people don't know. I started working out again. I want to say it was 2010, maybe, is when I started again. And I started, to get, I started running again after years of not running. And it was a New Year's resolution, actually. And I said to myself, I'm going to get up. I'm going to do this starting New Year's Day. Needless to say, it was seven degrees and snow on the ground on January 1st. But I still got up and I ran. Didn't run far, but I ran. Um, I think it only amounted to be like a half a mile, for real. Real talk. But the thing about that day was I didn't let the temperature stop me. I didn't let the conditions stop me. 
And I didn't say to myself what I'd said previous days, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm tired or anything like that. So even though it wasn't that far and it wasn't that fast, it let me know, Hey, you got no excuses because you can get around anything. It's all up here. And if it's in your mind, it's going to determine whether or not you win or lose. It's all about mindset. And that's why I tell you, don't worry about weight. Don't worry about inches. Worry about how you feel. Because as long as you continue to feel better and better, you're going to wake up before you know it. You're going to be like, damn, I'm down 10 pounds or damn, I can't fit this pair of pants anymore. And that's when it's going to be like, wow. And, and when you get a lot of those wow moments that accumulate together, um, it's a snowball effect. And that's why I like running so much. I mean, a lot of people don't like running because like they don't want to do the work. And I get that. Working out's not for everybody. Running's not for everybody. I just tell people, you know, like on our change forum on Facebook, just do something, any kind of activity. It don't matter what it is. Um, the human body is a crazy thing. Use it or lose it. And I don't want to be one of those people in a wheelchair if I don't have to be. I don't want to be one of those people that have a cane if I don't have to. Um, and it is part of life. You know, it's part of life. We're going to break down. Our bodies suck. They're only made for a limited amount of time. But just like these cars, what you put into it is what you get out of it. True. Very true. So I saw your uh, article this morning on your good friend, Whoopi Goldberg. Suspended from the view. Okay. I, I, I read what she said. And I see where she was going with it. She was wrong. Let's just get that out of the way. She's wrong as the day was long. But I know what she meant. And perhaps she should have said, in addition to racism, it was just about people being inhuman. And, and then it wouldn't have been any flack whatsoever. But to say it was not racism, yeah, you kind of wrong on that, Whoopi. Um, my whole problem is I really don't care what she said, how she said it, because a lot of times on there, the guests, the other co-hosts, they be to the left and they not PC and nothing happens. I just think personally it's bullshit. She got suspended. You know, it just it, that just seemed real extra to me. I'm like, did she really do enough to get suspended? Not really. Because some of the mother ones have said much worse that they should have got suspended. Oh, I but agree. I just I just think that we're so extra for no reason. Sometimes we pick and choose the wrong ones to hit to give them a slap on the hand and the ones we give a kick in the ass. And that's part and, of this today's cancel culture. Well, I wouldn't even say it's cancel culture. It's just you worried about so many different groups that may protest, have a, a Facebook thing or IG or whatever. Sometimes the wrong ones. It's like um, Donald Rollins, I listened to a podcast he was on, said it perfectly. When Dave Chappelle did his whole comedy thing that on Netflix, they got all that flack. And how gays don't want you to, they think you shouldn't say fact. They think that word should not be said. And he said, perfectly, he was like, how can y'all be upset about that and want that to be removed from people's language when we still try to get people to stop saying nigger that's, a, that's white? He was like, you can't be like, your word is more important than mine and leave frog us. He said, we've been going through this way longer than y'all have. And it's like, it's too much me, 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 when all said and done, all that shit's trash, all that shit's horrible, but that's yours true. isn't more important than mine, and that's the problem. So you act like she really offended some people, I'm like, more than likely, she probably didn't, because honestly, I forgot the view was still even fucking on. So when I saw it, I was like, damn, what's well, good to see Whoopi got a job still, and I was like, oh, this shit's still on. Cause I don't, I'm never looking for, you know what I'm saying? I've never watched one single episode of that. So I've watched it. I've watched it off and on. And I've seen all different, 
I say in the past three, four years, I haven't watched it. But before that, her, Sherry Shepard, Rosie, I've watched all the different ones, you know, Hasselback's wife or whatever. And the one white chick that's a comedian, you know, when Star Job. So I've seen through the different changes. Now it's just like they can't find nobody. I think that everyone likes across the board consensus wise. And it's like, I don't know if the talk come on anymore because it does. Now I've seen been- that. It, it does still come on. Oh, okay. But I think they've kind of went down now that Eve then left because nobody cares about Cheryl Underwood. She's more irritating than anything. You know, she's doing her best to be their version of Whoopi, and it's annoying. But well, you know, when I, now, now, like I said, I have watched a few episodes of that. When it first started off, she was mm-hmm. funny, and it wasn't forcibly funny. Now it seems like Cheryl Underwood is just trying to uh, – get a joke in every now and then and it just doesn't work yeah she's trying to be that black auntie for them yeah and i'm like you're not snoop i snoop uncle to everybody and everybody call him nephew no you 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 know you say nephew to everybody you you don't have that that essence to do that but that's what she's trying to do and it's damn irritating but like a lot of shows you know the the fan base is fickle and they trying to keep it so they Trying to be extra PC, PG, for no damn reason. Breaking news. Stafford USD 349. No school tomorrow. I knew it was coming. Yep. So, another day. Yep. Another day of no fun in the sun. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, yeah, I, I agree with you. It probably... The punishment didn't fit the crime, but I will say this about Whoopi. She handled it gracefully. She immediately apologized. She said, hey, I accept the uh, suspension. It's, you know, better than being canceled. I'll see you in a couple of days. Yeah. It's more like a vacation to her. Basically. Because they know if they lose her on the show, that show is done. She's the equivalent of Randy Jackson on American Idol. You can't lose Randy Jackson. Is he still on there? I don't think Idol comes on anymore. Okay, because I was going to say, I, I don't even watch it. I mean, I have a big hate-hate relationship with reality TV shows and game shows and stuff like that. I just My thing is with American Idol, when's the last time that the actual winner was a star besides uh, Carrie Underwood and well, who Kelly came, Clarkson? Um, if you take those two away... You don't have a legitimate star. Yeah, because <laughs> even if Jennifer Hudson was bigger than her winner, uh, Fantasia, I guess she did cool. Ruben had a good run better than who won on his. So it's just like, then the one chick who really been better than all of them, but her news killed her chance at a career. Frenchie's been better than all of them. Yeah, she, she was pretty good. Uh, yeah, um, and, and going back to Ruben, he killed his own career. Um, he, he didn't keep the thing going. Yeah, I think he, he got sorry. really complacent. Yeah, he kept saying sorry too much. Well, 2004, 2008. Like, damn, Ruben, how sorry are you? Just buy that whole ring and move on. <laughs> there is that. All right. So just to let everybody know in about uh, five minutes or less, we have uh, Nelson Shields that should be coming on the show. We got some uh, important NFL talk. Um, this one I'm going to kick off with. Uh, uh, Nelson can chime in on if he comes in in time. But I want to talk about our guy, Brian Flores. Did a damn good job in Miami, yet they let him go. Um, I don't – I didn't like that situation, but what compounded – over the last couple of days has made it worse. Just to bring everybody up to speed, he is suing the Giants and the league. And we're going to get into the two league lawsuits here in a second. But for his lawsuit, it started when Bill Belichick sent him a text congratulating him on the job for the, My- uh, for the uh, New York Giants. No, no. And he's he like, sent the text to the wrong person. Exactly. He meant he to send to it to Brian. He meant to send it to Brian uh, Gayball, I think his name is, or yes. and because he's the one that got the job. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
you could write that off as a mistake. Hey, I got the wrong Brian. But here's the thing. It came out that he interviewed before Brian Flores. Brian Flores was simply used to activate the Rooney, Rooney rule. Yeah. And for everybody that doesn't know, the Rooney rule means that you must interview a black candidate for your coaching position. No, not black, a minority. Minority, you're right. You're right, a minority. But the thing that I hate about that rule is that opens the door for the word token, a token interview. Yep. That's all it is. So we need to put things in place to make sure that that does not happen. And I think it's going to start with this lawsuit. And I think the league needs to get hit with a couple of these lawsuits in order for them to wake up and make some changes. Now, do I think he's going to win? No, I think it's going to be the same situation as the John Gruden thing. It's going to be magically settled out of court. So they're going to get a big cash settlement and it's going to get swept under the rug. You won't hear from it again. Much like you haven't heard anything about the Washington <coughs> Commanders football team. See, there, there's your mistake again. You make it personal. You got to leave that Gruden shit. We got to leave that to the side. The whole Gruden thing, that was bullshit to begin with. All them emails or whatever, that was nothing more than Washington saving their own ass because they still was under fire for the whole name thing or whatever. Because I had read to where it was a possibility, probably about that big, that they was going to try to backpedal back to being the Redskins. Which, I don't know. But that just lets you know, again, Daniel Snyder, I don't think he got it all up here. His team, I don't think is the brightest team. And then, you know, that name they picked, the Commanders. I think I sent you the tweet where the guy was like, well, we now the, the Washington Commies. So it's just like... Exactly. It's... That's just a whole horrible situation. But even the, even the great Al Michaels, Michaels weighed in on that, that name change. And he's like, remember the Seattle, I think it's the hockey team. They call themselves the Kraken. And then people started making fun of the stadium, call it the crack house. That's hilarious. You, you like, open yourself you, up. There's no way you can cover everything in a PC, but you know, everybody want to be PC. But far as a uh, Flores, he'll win this case. He'll get some bread because he's still being paid by Miami right now regardless. So he'll get some more money on top of that. But the thing that people fail to realize, the lawsuit's a beautiful thing. Salute to him. Salute to his team. Salute to Belichick being a dumbass. You know, old-ass man in technology, they don't ever work. Now, I was going to get to that. Is, was Did he do that on purpose or was it an accident? I think he did it. I think he did it on accident. Because uh, the man's untouchable. The man's like Teflon Dunn. He is a guy to the NFL because all his, his coaching accolades, because there's no coach to touch him. Him and Bra Brady will go down as gods of the game, whether you like it or not. Where I think the issue is going to come to where Flores, he's going to win, but he's going to fall. Because end of the day, Coaches run, owners run the league. How many black owners do we have? How many minority owners do we have? One minority owner. They're not going to give a fuck about what he got to say. And then uh, only, the change is going to come years down the line because, you know, the old owners are going to die and leave it to their kids. And their kids are probably going to want to sell controlling interest to where they just want to get a check. They ain't trying to run nothing. So it's yeah. going to be 10, maybe 15 years from now, our grandkids will see the change, not us or our kids. Our kids may see it, but we're not going to see it. For We'll be old by the time that happens. So it's like, this is nothing more than some stirring the pot, maybe some little tremors from it, but it won't be an outright earthquake of change. It'll it'll uh it'll speed up the slow process to where you know it's, it's not gonna you look up tomorrow and Diddy's finally getting a chance to buy a team like we tried to buy the Panthers. It's, it's not gonna speed that up, but it's gonna be put on notice to where the government's gonna be watching it. They're gonna they're gonna intervene 
and see what's going on. Because where the NFL is great, the NFL is behind. And that's where I think baseball has them beat and basketball has them beat. Yeah. But it's like they have the bigger crowd, they make the more money, but they don't have the diversity and ownership. So, and I think that that is kind of a hindrance, too, because they've got all the money. I feel yeah. like they feel if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Until two things got to happen for the NFL to truly make a change. USFL or XFL got to really put their foot on their neck to make them to start interfering with talent. And the TV deals got to be somehow interfered with because of the lack of diversity. Yeah. Because this is what I will say. I don't know if you was one, but a lot of people was on my neck about the big three. They're about to be in season five. This NBA season, at least 20 players got 10-day contracts for the actual team or their uh, G League team. So they're putting their foot on the NBA's neck like, hey, y'all got two rounds of drafts, but you missed this player, this player, and this player. And, yeah, he's a vet, but you see he still can play. He can give you a good 10, 15 minutes. And you have solved the ripple effect of that to where every time I looked up for a good month span, players was getting 10-day contracts to the team or the G League. So until the NFL feels that from another league, Change ain't going to happen like we want it to. It's going to still just be floating around. Do you think the Rocks League will have any effect on the NFL once it gets started? It has cliche because of the name. We got to see what the product's going to be. And remember, the product was good before all this, before COVID hit. The USL product was getting better before COVID hit. I think if the XFL would have kept going their full season, they would have put pressure on the NFL. Because it was a good product. But the thing with the XFL, stay separate of the NFL. Don't start when they're going. Be separate of that. Yeah. That's the key thing with Q. With the big three, him and his business partner, they go from January, I mean, June to like August. They stay free of the NBA. So when you the finals over, two weeks later, they start. And players that didn't get drafted or whatever, they go to that and they try out to make the squad. You got to stay separate of the big product so your product stands out. And with time, you can grow. You may not level the field, but if you're right here, you're going to be noticed. And for the big three to be in season five and they set out a year because of COVID, you can't help but notice. Yeah, I, I, I think that they are really handling their business practices to the maximum of their potential. So, And the one thing that they did that was smart that I think Vince struggled with the XFL is each year they, they signed one-year deals for their TV contracts. And each year they got a better deal. So that was a smart thing. And I think now they may be still doing CBS this year or whatever. So they got a better deal. That's the thing. That TV contract is big for everybody across the board, regardless of the sport. Yeah, I like that. And it allows them to get a marginally bigger piece of the pie every year. And as long as they continue to put out a good product, it's going to grow. So that can't help but make you want to make your business better every single year. Smart move. I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to make this, uh, or make this statement. People may say this is blasphemy. Because you see NBA players go to the games and support. This is year five for Big Three. By year seven, they'll be bigger than WNBA. I can't find any fault in that statement. I, I would probably tend to agree, as a matter of fact. Reason why I say that, I sent you yesterday, Becky, whatever her name is, making one million a year as a coach. One of the best players in the WNBA said that is hilarious and priceless that the head coach is making a million dollars and that's four times more than a max contract for a great player in that league. 
Yeah, there's some cracks in that foundation. Yeah. So that right there lets me know it levels the playing field to where they can leapfrog them because they're having money issues. Because you and I know NFL, MLB, um, NBA, the coaches ain't making more than the players. The coaches are going to make more than a vet minimum. But if you a star player, the coach ain't touching that salary. So for that coach's salary to be here and the max player is four times less, so that means I'm making a mil, you making 200000 mm-hmm. And she made the comment, if y'all think I'm going to go through another season and pay to upgrade my ticket to first class, you're joking. You can't wow. even put these motherfuckers in first class. Now, mind you, she's like six foot eleven. She needs the damn room. She can't be in coach. <laughs> oh, she's beautiful than a motherfucker too. That's a whole other story. But still, that lets you know where you got NFL, you got MLB, you got NBA. You know, WNBA tennis, all soccer, they rotate between each other. Big threes go leapfrog WNBA wherever they are on the list within the next two to three years. True. All right. All they really missing, they need one big name marquee player that don't want to hang it up to come play. Mm, I think they're going to need a little bit more than that. No, you do need one. Remember, it's all about name cliche. Because you can, they had it with AI, but AI really was done. If AI really wanted to play, he would have sent him to the stratosphere sooner. But he really was done. He just went and got a check. Maybe LeBron will go over there. LeBron ain't going to go. The, just, the NBA won't let LeBron go. Yeah, we will get back to that. I'm waiting on Nelson because I want both of y'all to weigh in on that. You know what I'm getting at, the, the quote-unquote Jordan effect. But we, we will get there. But running it back down to the NFL, where do you think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to play next year? Because he's not going to be a Niner. CFL. Wow. That's kind of harsh, don't you think? I'm a better quarterback than him. He wasn't bad. He wasn't good either. Here's the thing, though. They made it to the NFC Championship game. No, Debo Samuel and that defense made it to the championship game. Okay. Garoppolo got a bus pass and was on for the ride. Fair enough. Garoppolo has to go to a team. And see, here's the thing. This is why I'll say this. I hate it when people call Alex Smith a game manager because Alex made plays. Jimmy doesn't make plays. Alex was a good quarterback. But he just – he didn't go deep. He was a good intermediate slant, 20-yard screen pass quarterback. He wasn't throwing the long ball. I know we learned back in the day from the Braves, Nike commercial, chicks dig the long ball. Alex didn't have a long ball in him consistently. And I don't knock him because the man averaged 10 wins a season when he was here. So, to me, that's beyond a game manager. Garofalo is a game manager. He's no better than Trent Dilfer – or Brad Johnson, and they both won Super Bowls. And it's crazy because Brad Johnson was a good quarterback in Minnesota. He went to Tampa. He must have MIB'd his memory and forgot how to play quarterback. I would take this magic over Garofalo. He was mistake prone, and they were like, listen, Brad, don't lose us this game. The defense will handle it. So that's what happened. The defense won that Super Bowl. By the way, the Keyshawn Johnson had like three catches for 25 yards and a touchdown in the Super Bowl, it's laughable. Exactly. But Jimmy, Jimmy I mean, so the fact, he closed the fact that they knew the, the fact head. that they knew the other team's plays was the reason why they won that Super Bowl. But we're not going to go there. Who? Oh, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm uh, talk- uh, the, yeah, uh, yeah, right. yeah. Remember who they played? Yeah. And, and just just be side note, um, McDaniel's. Already told Davis, yes, it was a fumble. You know what I'm talking about. The tuck rule. And that was him trying, that was him talking shit. He don't believe that. Well, it's in print now, whether he believes it or not. So it's all good. I'll get back to that in a second. Going back to Garoppolo, though. 
I feel like he's going to be, first of all, he's going to be with the AFC team. It's a good chance. Um, there's a lot of young quarterbacks. I wanted to say he'd be with the Jets, but they've got a young, I won't call him a young gun, but a, a good young quarterback down there. Garoppolo's about to become a journeyman quarterback. The, the thing is, the Patriots or the Jets, we really don't know if they got a good quarterback because it wasn't consistent. Of course, it went up and went down. They were literally like a paper airplane. You know how you make that one paper airplane, you throw it, and that mug just go? That's how both them quarterbacks was. And once that win hit, then bitches crash. And that's how they quarterback. I wouldn't call them good. Garoppolo is going to be the new Fitzpatrick. Because Fitzpatrick got about two years left in him. Garoppolo is going to be the, the gap between start over and future quarterback. I disagree. He's going to be that, that in between. I, I disagree simply because you made a point. Garoppolo doesn't make plays. Fitzmagic was able to make plays. So I would put him yeah. above Garoppolo. But Fitzmagic is a traveler. His yeah. job, he keeps the seat warm while the young player is getting ready. That's what yeah. Garoppolo is about to be. Because outside of Miami, and I say Buffalo, Fitzmagic primarily has been keeping the seat warm. Granted, Miami should have kept him. That was dumb on their part. Because uh, left-hand Sally still ain't ready because he can't stay healthy. No, he can't. It's sad, too. It ain't sad. It's just the NFL. I mean, you know, being a Lakers fan, what does Sam Bowie do for y'all? You know, he balled for y'all. But for Portland, he was trying. No. Where was it Lakers he went first? Uh, No, he went to the Houston Rockets. Was it the Rockets? Well, wherever Bowie went, he was trashed. But like with his last three four years, because remember, career, Sam Bowie was, was the number one pick. Yeah, Chicago was the number two pick. The rest yeah. is history. They got Jordan. Said they got Sam Bowie, and Sam Bowie didn't show up until the last three years of his career. That's so, like the Clippers one got Olua Candy. He was going to be the next big thing center wise. So think about he, this: the Houston Rockets it, uh, uh, ended up down the road with Hakeem Olajuwon. Imagine Jordan and Elijah Juan on the same team. I don't know if Jordan would have been as dominant. Well, Jordan would have been in the league for several years first, so it would everything would have ran Elijah through him. Juan, it would have been, you know, I honestly, if they would have got Jordan, they never would have got Drexler, and it would have been Jordan and the King when they would have got rings. But I think Jordan would have been like he wouldn't be what he is now. He would be fair, fair top enough. 50. He wouldn't be a GOAT. I can see that. You know, I, I'm a big proponent of everything has a reason. Everything falls into a certain space. Yeah. So. I don't agree with Scotty Pippen, though. No, you weren't as good as Mike. <laughs> let that go, Scotty. Please let that go. You know, Scotty trying to sell a book. Scotty got embarrassed by the last dance. But at the same time, Scotty, you signed off and let it happen. You could have been like, no, so that that's on Scotty. Scotty got bad business people around. But we all know the NBA sub. This is what I want to talk about. So being a sports fan, it's been a rough week for me. Chiefs lost. That hurt. Then I think I text you. Yeah, I text you. To see Charles Oakley on the breakfast club pissing on Patrick Ewing, that hurt my soul. Being a Knicks fan. Being a fan of Ewan and Oakley, that hurt my soul deeply. For him to say that Patrick had no heart and he never carried the team, what did he not do to make him not carry the team? How about you get a jumper with your broke ass? How about you actually become a legit rebounder? All you was was a fucking enforcer. Nothing about you was consistent. You was as stiff as an old man in a wheelchair on the court. But you talk mad because he didn't get you a ring. I, that was like the most disrespectful shit I've ever seen. Then, like, I'm talking to a friend of mine who's a Knicks fan, too. And then he pisses on Patrick, saying how Patrick was uh, basically a company nigger. And I was like, no, he's not. I said, people fail to realize Patrick isn't from the U.S. He didn't come in with the selfish mindset when he went to Georgetown. 
Remember, he was learning how to play the game for real when he went to Georgetown. He was a humble, quiet dude that led by his play. He, he worked on the court. He expected management to do their part to get the pieces around him. Management didn't do that. He got some tragic-ass pieces around him, is the best way to put it. And Oakley was one of those tragic-ass pieces. Because being a Bulls fan, me being a Knicks fan, I'm going to ask you honestly, outside of when Allen Houston Latrell came toward the end of his career, what other firepower did he have to help him offensively? Uh, refresh my memory. Was Rip Hamilton part of the Knicks squad back then? No, Hamilton played for Detroit. He was Detroit, Chicago at one point. And then Washington, that's right, Washington. Okay. Uh, Then I can't give you anybody else. Um, I really can't because they didn't have any – they didn't have any good guard play or small forward play that made me say, damn, the Knicks are going to be a force. The equivalent of the Knicks is that Charles Smith play against Chicago. You six fucking nine, six ten, and you can't even get a foul on a layup when you're under the several, several shots at it. That's the equivalent of the talent he had around him. When that motherfucker said in dinner, 20 year career, Patrick only had two flagrants, and in his 15, he had 24, 25 flagrants. That don't make you a great player because you can get a flagrant, uh, flagrant foul. I tell the players to get those nowadays. I agree with what you're saying, but at the same time, I do feel like Patrick should have been a little bit more uh, tougher when it came to that. Maybe not 20, but, hey, get five or ten. And I, I, point, I point to that dunk on Scottie Pippen. I would have laid his ass out. And Pip's my I, boy. We, I know we're talking about him a lot because he's saying some stupid stuff. See, he coming up that, like that, I'd have put him on the floor. Well, see, that's the thing. That's the enforcer's job. That's Oakley's job to do that. That's Mason's job to do that. But Neither Pippen's running away from them. He's going towards the goal. There's only one person between him and that goal. That's you. No, I get what you're saying. He went for the block. He got dunked on. When he stepped over him, your enforcers are supposed to come in and right that wrong. Oh you, yeah, you okay? Job. Yeah, you talking about that? The stepping over in part. Yeah. yeah. When he, Patrick did what he's supposed to do. He a center. He's not one to back down from it. He went for the block. No different than Matumbo. He goes for the block. But once the dunk happened, that's where Oakley's supposed to be there. Hey, that's my man. Nowhere to be found because why? He's Team Jordan when it's all said and done. Yeah. That's I, all I, like Vince would be talking like that, and I said it to you. I mean, he said that you were Tim one of y'all, and I was like. Patrick Ewing is a is New York's version of David Robinson. David Robinson didn't get no flagrants. He came, did his job. He trusted in the organization. But the difference was Pop had juice, made shit happen. Yes, because they had juice. Because they labeled did they labeled David Robinson as soft as hell. What did Pop do? He went out and got Rodman. Rodman made that team tough as nails. See that. Rodman was an enforcer. Yep. Rodman knew his job. Whether it was with the Spurs or the Bulls, he knew his job. I know the Oakley's going to be an enforcer, but you're shooting threes and shit. Get your big ass up under the goal and do what you paid to do with your nine jumping ass. It's like I hate when an average player wants to talk like they're great when they can't spell great. If he averaged a double double for his career, I'm surprised. I was expecting him to average eight and eight, if anything. Yeah. It's like, it, was, it was such blasphemy. When I know, in all for realness, you you spitting venom because when you got kicked out of the, the arena, when that was two years ago when you got kicked out, you felt Patrick should have came to your aid. Motherfucker, he's coaching in Georgetown. He don't even go back like that. Why? Because they fucked him over and should have gave him the coaching job. Yeah. But you want him to speak on your behalf and tell him you don't want to um, let them retire your jersey. You ain't got no other accolades. You on motherfucking YouTube doing a cookie. You don't get the fuck out of here with your nine talking ass. Well, 
Look who it is. <clears throat> okay, so you you right on time because we're getting ready to get into this NFL stuff. And since it's your division, I want to talk about the Washington Commanders. Okay, first of all, <laughs> we already talked about the name. The name is a joke. Have you seen the uniforms? Yes, I just literally saw That's a nice little ago. USFL squad you got in your division. Yeah, but I mean... They might as well have kept the Washington football team as a name. To me, but, that sounded I mean, better. Yeah. Yeah, that sounded better. Like, Here's the thing. Real. Okay, I guess, yes, Washington, you're in D.C. It's a military community. Okay, I get it. But why aren't you the admirals? You rank lower yeah. than a captain. You're not even a captain. You're a commander. So you're going to name us after one of the lower-ranking officers? Really? <laughs> not a general, not an admiral, not even a captain. You're a commander. I ain't even think about on that aspect. I, I did. I, I'm, I'm looking at it from several aspects. I mean, so you're saying you're not good enough to carry the Redskin name. The Washington football team is too generic, but we want to name you after the lowest ranking officer in any of the armed forces. Okay, granted, okay, maybe a lieutenant is lower rank, but still. You're they saluting everybody else. Eight, at least. Yeah. Man, that is. They, you know, now when Washington <laughs> can't get no worse, then they, they prove to everybody, yes, we can. Heather and I were talking about this today, and she came up with a better name. She said, since there's so many animals in the league, call them the Washington Wolves. That sounds better than Yeah. Animals. Yeah. Yeah. So when a woman from Kansas has a better name than anybody can come up with in D.C., that tells me this team already has problems before the season starts. My thing Hell, you could have even just said the Washington Warriors. Yeah. 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 I, I wonder, did you even do a poll? Did you have a vote? You should have did. It's just like, who's around Snyder? Who was around him thinking? But there, you just said it right there. It's Snyder. This man has an ego. And I'm willing to bet he didn't want to hear from any outside source. I'm willing to bet he had a short list and the people around him, he had them pick. And that's what they came up with. He was already mad. He was already mad they made him get rid of the name. Yeah. And when you've got two years to come up with a new name, you, got, you better come strong. I could have came up with commanders in two minutes. What I, I found funny is that it got leaked. And because I swear to God, I saw something that they wasn't going to announce it to the fourth, and they announced it today. So yeah. The shit got leaked yesterday. Right. So they had to, you know, as uh, Berman will say, you know, round up the horses and put it out there before the luster, I guess, died. But when you got all black uniform and they got a W on the helmet, that that's trash to me. That is yeah. that is so horrible. I yeah, want to know. And I I'm getting real. I'm getting real sick of y'all's teams coming up with these black uniforms. That ain't your color. That's not your color. <laughs> Let that shit go. Eagles too. Eagles too. Right, I like y'all. Hey, I Why love that. NBA? If, I, if I see the Chiefs do that shit, we gonna have some consequences and repercussions no, over there. Ours, we got a uh, set of black. We got all red. But blame the NBA. What I will all say this. I will color. say this about the AFC West. Yeah, blame the NBA. Because they got tradition. They got they tradition. Didn't call that to happen. But once the NBA went to when the Bulls started wearing that pinstripe black uniform. Yeah. That's when everybody started getting different uniforms. Baseball teams now got like four five uniforms. Yeah. I mean, the uniforms the Miami Heat got. Oh my God! Uh, one for oh, every day. Miami month. Vice uniform. Yep. Which uh, sadly, I do want that jersey. Gonna do a little dope, but <laughs> <laughs> I think I even seen. Didn't the Bulls have a green uniform for St. Patrick's Day? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! They just go. That's sacrilege, right there. You don't wear the uniform of the Celtics if you're the Bulls. You don't see yeah. the Lakers wearing green. No, Lakers got one. Oh, oh, I'm out of touch. Yep. When it comes to this money and he sells, they don't care. They you got a Christmas uniform. Yeah. You got something for Thanksgiving. Things you got an MLK. 
Then the NFL, you got the the throwback. You got the what they call the neon with the what color color what rush called? color uh, rush jerseys. Yeah. So it's like and then baseball. They the Royals got like four different versions of a light blue jersey. I'm like, really? I'm gonna need y'all just to pick one, because one got KC, one got the Royals, one got Kansas City. Same fucking color, just different name across. It. Don't forget about the Monarchs version. That's being yep. disrespected over in Kansas. Don't forget about jerseys. They got the Veterans Day jerseys. They got the camouflage. Yep. Remember NFL? Them bitches like hundred fifty dollars for those. Yep. Yeah, but they don't wear those during games. So I you don't wear them during games, but the coaches on the sidelines all fatigued up. That's yeah. true. That's true. They are. Like I can't front. Them hoodies is dope, but who ain't paying hundred dollars for a hoodie? Is this guy? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. If it's dope enough, I probably would because both of my jerseys are the authentic jerseys. And I just said to myself, I'm gonna spend that kind of money. I want to wear the real deal. So, yeah. you know, it's it's all good. Now you best believe I ain't eating in them. And when I go to an actual game, I'm wearing the uh, the one hundred dollar or the seventy five dollar jersey. I ain't wearing the two hundred fifty dollar version. Richard going to the game in a trash bag to protect the jersey. You, you, you damn Shut right. Shut up. And. and if uh, Brittany Mahomes wants to spill some beer or some champagne, <laughs> we, we go ahead. Right, let's, let's, let's talk about that. Let, let's talk about that real quick. Yes, sir. I see a problem with it because you're celebrating. And I, I truly think a friend of mine made the comment if it was a guy, nobody would have cared. I don't see the problem because from what I've seen, whoever got sprayed, none of them have voiced a complaint. It was motherfuckers that saw the video that complained. Here's the thing. If it was a girl, nobody would have cared, except for this girl was Brittany Mahomes. Yeah, I was about to say that. She's the most irritating. Hey, you married to the 500, do. You, were, you married to the $500 million man? Let me get a piece of that. I'm upset. Let me voice my opinion. I want some money. I want some fame. I want some notoriety, too. That's where that's coming from. You said it was the people that was uh, it was the people that saw the video, but I it was a woman I thought that came out and said that she didn't want champagne all over her. No, I ain't seen nothing about anybody that Dang. actually got hit. It was just people that was like, what she was doing was wrong. I'm like, first off, she spraying motherfuckers probably could never afford that bottle she's spraying anyway. So I'd be up under there. Thank you. Let me let me get a cup of that. <laughs> hey, full I mean, disclosure. Full disclosure before we continue on with this, because you brought up uh, alcohol. This is my off-season plan because I love football so much. Every athlete that's got a liquor out, I'm going to try them at least once. That's a tall Man. task, but I'm going to do it. Every football I athlete. I ain't got time to waste my money on trash. Oh, every football athlete. Yeah, every football athlete. I don't care about the uh, What I will say, just my last remark on her doing the, the champagne, when I was at the Royals game in their heyday, when they was doing their playoff run, and I was at, I think, a game six or seven, and they came back and won. People lost their shit to where it was a big-ass party, to where it, shit was going everywhere. No one cared. It's no different than that, but I think it's who the person is. I Cancel think a lot culture. Of are like, okay. Cancel culture, man. And I brought this high school yeah. sweetheart. They, there's no way they can last. And she done dug in. She's, she ain't going nowhere. People need to deal with it. She done had she his child. She's in the picture for life. For she done had his child. She's in there for life. Or at least yeah, 18 like, years. Catch her drunk on Westport. Well, him drunk on Westport. He go home. He's, they've been together since like freshman year. People need to deal with it. Now, I will, I will say this. I will say this about her. And I, I shouldn't, now in two sentences now, I'm defending a Chiefs player and or their spouse. She's not as bad as Giselle. That is true. Yeah, Tom's wife is crazy. Now, like I said, who you can ship off, you can ship his motherfucking brother to Siberia. That nigga's yeah. irritating. And, and I understand that from what I was uh, listening to on the Pat McAfee show, he's a TikTok star now, but Jackson Mahomes wouldn't have been shit 
Yeah, if, he's, if his he's brother was his brother's fame, and he's he's doing it in a dumbass way. Yeah. 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 I think, and I I agree with uh, Pat. He needs to sit down with both of them and say, "Hey, I'm gonna need y'all to tone it down next season because I already got to worry about winning these games. I don't need you know to be looking at other headlines as well." well see, but it, but you know what? That's true. That's just like that's what LeBron had to do with his mom. Yep. Get off. Sit her down and say, look, I'm trying to build an image. I'm trying to build a brand. You are messing it up for me. You know, I, I want to be something after basketball. I want to still be bringing in this big money after basketball. Yeah. You being classless and all of this, you're not helping me. Saying, I know y'all said that. I know y'all said she's worse than Giselle. No, Giselle no, Giselle got money. First. Giselle is worse. I said Giselle is worse, but Giselle got money. Stand on her own. Who is yeah. Brittany? Brittany? Outside of my own. Well, allegedly before she gave up her career, she was supposed to be a good soccer player. But oh, soccer. Get the hell out of here NFL, with that. I'm just saying. When, when you think of women's soccer, you're thinking of. The USA team, as far yeah, as it. being yeah. good at soccer. I ain't never heard her talked about as far as breaking that. Yeah. Nothing. Well, you know she's part owner in the team we got here. So she's about to be busy because they building that new stadium and everything. The brother's the one that just, at some point, the team is going to have a sit down with his brother. And they go banish his ass, and I'm waiting on that to happen. If Mahomes and see, I guess. It, they're going to do it for them. I guess what I'm trying to say is Giselle has her own image and her own brand. Yeah. Brit Brittany is destroying Mahomes' brand. She, There's nothing. She, go ahead, go ahead. You don't, you don't think what? I don't think she's destroying it. The problem is, and what we all, what we fail to realize, you know, and this is going to be excuse to everyone look at it, end of the day, they're still only 25 and 26. Coming from oh. coming out some little ass town in Texas that's smaller than Springfield, Missouri. So this is still true, but this is still what I'm the saying big city to them. <laughs> you know I'm saying it, and I know destroy is a big word. Nobody cares about her image. No, not at all. It relates her to my home. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? When Giselle and Brady got together, it was a power couple. Yeah. Mahomes and his woman, it's Mahomes. Yeah, that, you're right. A power couple. Yeah, she's Miss Patrick. Man, yeah. Giselle is doing nothing to hurt Brady. They just say that's Brady's crazy wife. Every time, <laughs> Wait, yeah. Every time Brittany do something, Mahomes is feeling that. Mahomes got to answer those questions. You didn't see Brady answering questions about his wife? No, you're right, you're right. I think this offseason, some changes will be made. And some things will be done to where they're going to be like, hey, this is him, this is you. You need to – you own, you part owner of this team, y'all part owner of the Royals, you need to get intertwined in something. But also okay. I think that's, that's one thing I think the Chiefs have to get better at, I think the Eagles are good at, the Raiders are probably good at. Where is the wives at the girl – you know, where are they at to where – they're doing their thing as a group to where they're like, nah, you shouldn't do that or whatever. So that's where the gift and the curse where you don't have that veteran leadership as far as that vet that got that wife that, hey, this is how we do stuff. But, you know, yeah. sometimes you get that wild one. Yeah. They don't want to go with the crowd. And I'm not saying that's what she is. I just think she just – because just think. You know, I would say – start really hearing about Britney and all of this until after the Super Bowl. Well, actually, you didn't hear about she it was the cool. contract. Once he yeah. got that contract, that's when things got magnified. Then she started wilding. Started wilding. Nobody like that. I, I'll say this, and then we'll wrap up Britney. Um, with what Mahomes is getting paid and what he's trying to do, he's trying to entrench himself into the city and the community. Mm -hmm. You do not want your spouse or your uh, siblings 
to mess that up for you because if you're entrenched in the community, you can never live that down and your playing career will be over soon. You don't want to be that guy that had it all in people's eyes and blew it because of who you're with. That's going right. to be some bad blood in the community. So he, right. needs, he needs to address that in the off season. I think yeah. that's a good factor. She, yeah. you know what? She could be wild if she had all the Kansas city to have her back. Yeah. But it's Kansas yeah, city that's bashing her. Yeah. She got it. She hasn't earned it. I think it's because who she always with his dumb ass brother. And instead of her checking him, she just go with the right, you know, what 50 cent T do when he came? Guilty by association. Yeah. And yep. this this the last thing I'll say on it. It's not a coincidence we never see her people. We only see Mahomes' mom and dad, her and the brother. We've never seen her have her people at the game, or at least being videoed at the game. So that right there is probably something. Mm. Mm. I ain't look at it that way, but that's something to look I ain't at. Either. Now, I want to stay on the Kansas City Chiefs real quick, and I want to address <laughs> this to Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, go, ahead. go ahead. Nelson, <laughs> Nelson, I want you, I want you to um when I say this, I, I I want your input to make sure that I'm not wrong. Kansas City Chiefs okay. finished, they finished what, 12 and what is it, 12 and 5? I think it was yeah, like thirteen and four or something. Sometimes now that seventeen games, you'd have to be oh, okay. Yeah, thirteen and three, one something like that or whatever. But let, let's just get to it. No, nah, y'all. No, nah, no. Nah, you what, you what, you didn't have thirteen wins. Game. You didn't have thirteen wins because the Titans Same were the win. number one seed. Well, regardless, okay. we got it. This this is what but, I was but, saying. But this is where I'm going with this. Wait, this is where I'm going with this. If you had twelve, the Raiders had ten. You had two more wins than the Raiders. You beat us twice. That's your two wins. You okay. had one extra game in the playoffs. Who we both lose to? The Bengals. So I, I'm not thinking that you're too much better than the Raiders. You can lie to and tell yourself that. The thing with the Bengals, what I've seen, middle of the season and the playoffs, it was like Baltimore in 2000. They kept hanging around. Nobody would put them out. It is like you got them. It's like you got a boxer up against the ropes, and you just need to go hard on them. Everybody just kept doing this to the Bengals. But that's where I'm going. Okay, with this. let me. That's let where me, I'm going with this. Hold on, hold on, Nelson. Let, let, let me let me okay. finish, Nelson. This is where I'm going with this. When we played them, we shut them out in the second half and almost caught back up. We ran out of time. That's why we lost the game. So we figured them out. I'm wondering why Kansas City didn't figure them out, and was up twenty-one to three. No, is that a choke job? Is that a choke job? Nelson agree with me on this. Did Nelson agree with me? We had them. But what does Andy know for when he gives the lead? He comes conservative, Andy. Once you shift down, you can't rev back up. And at that point, here come the Bengals. Like three weeks prior, here come the Bengals. The defense, we both, all three of us agree, was trash to begin with. It's been trash all season. You're not getting that. You're not, you're not getting that. <laughs> no, let, let no. me finish. Let me finish. You can go ahead and say let, that, but you're not getting that. The defense has had leads before and lost it. But it's not their fault. The offense never read back up, and the Bengals went right past them. When we didn't take the three points at half, being cute, and Mahomes being cute, because the mistake – well, I should say the mistake. I get CBS sideline reporter props. Because she said on live TV, Mahomes told Andy, let me get one more play. I can get seven. Let me get one more play. Andy should have been the coach and said, no, take the three, go into the half up by 14. You go into the half up by 11, if I'm across the field, I'm telling myself, we've been here before. This is nothing. And what happened? We got three more points, and I knew – when we didn't get that the three at the half, I said, oh, we're going home. Because Mahomes, is, he's a typical quarterback. Confidence go be high. When he put it on himself and fuck up, confidence go drop. They didn't get his confidence back up. He was a shell of himself the whole second half. And that was okay. the end of the okay. game right there. Thank you for your sympathy-ass uh, summary of the game. <laughs> Can I go now? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Back to Richard's point. 
Y'all wasn't very good. Start there. I'm going to tell you why. You choked to the same team in the same month. Did it less than three weeks. Okay? That's proof enough that y'all wasn't as good as what y'all thought y'all was. Now, this thing with the defense being bad. Let's go back seven weeks when y'all started winning games. All you can hear Chiefs fans saying, every one of y'all on Facebook, oh, our defense is this. Look at Matthews. Oh, look at this. Look at Clark. Look, our defense is this. It, it, it didn't came up. Now you saying the defense ain't good. I'm going to go with what I've been saying all season. Mahomes is not what y'all think he is. He has a lot to learn. He is a good quarterback. Make no mistake about it. He's I would even say I would even say level. he's a very good quarterback, but I'm not ready to put him on the great list because greats to me have to have multiple championship wins. They really do. You know I, agree, and this is what great. he don't have multiples. I still say I Brett Favre is better than Aaron Rodgers. I disagree. What with I that. know this about every one of you Chiefs fans. Y'all know it was Mahomes' fault that the game was lost because I never mentioned anything about, oh, the refs stole the game from me, which is y'all classic thing of what y'all always say. There you go. I was so humbled that y'all savior, y'all grim reaper, I believe, this, this, this is what I'll, this did what I'll not say. come through for y'all. This is what I'll say to you, Nelson. Mahomes, he's going to be considered great because what he's done in a short amount of time. Whether you like it or not, how they do it, prognosticators, they're going to consider him great. Mahomes has to learn how to shake off a bad play because you could see into that half he was shook. As far as the defense, the defense was, wasn't great, wasn't good. They were after during that run. But the change of the defense, when Fitton got hurt, because he was the number one corner in the league. He didn't come back to that game. He was not healthy. Sneed left to deal with the death of his brother. He didn't come back the same because he started getting roasted. And then, like you, you know, I will finally agree with you. Matt, Honey Badger, I can't say his name right. He's good. He's not great. He'll make a play, but he won't make the, the game-saving tackle. He might pick us and get a pick or two, but he's not a Ed Reed. He's not a John Lynch. He's not of that caliber. So we got to okay. Let me let me let me correct you on something real quick. You said Mahomes is going to be great because of what he's done in a short amount of time. Yeah, they're going to they consider him great because of that. I can tell you this: Kaepernick was great and he was young in a short amount of time. Where is he at now? Who? <laughs> I'm trying to compare them. them. Mahomes won a Super Bowl, but Kaepernick carried the team to a Super Bowl. Okay. See, but now wait, wait. Let me finish. Let Go me ahead. finish. What I'm saying is, Mahomes' can, career can bomb for the next six years. Is he great? He looked at his great. Or will he just look be looked at as a, a quarterback that everybody learned how to adjust to him and they shut him down? He just became a good quarterback. So let's not say he's going to be great. Still got a, a ways to go to be great. I'm not but, taking nothing from him. No, I agree. He still got some time in front of him. Let's not say that he's great. No, I'm just telling you. If, because, because it was a reason. Reason people obviously looked over him in the draft. It was a reason that Texas Tech is great. Now, so I agree with Nelson yeah. and I agree with you, Kev, but here's where I have a problem with it. You know how everybody's talking about Tom Brady's the GOAT? Okay, he's earned that. I'll give him that. But they were quick to say Mahomes is the baby GOAT. You ain't earned that. Yep. You ain't earned you ain't that. Earned that. But on that, I sent you why they say that. The league always has a stable of quarterbacks they put in your face. I call, oh, I yeah, you. Nelson, we call that the Jordan effect. Because you know, ever since Jordan came in the league, they've been trying to replace him. 
They had him with Kobe. Kobe retired. That's it. They haven't been able to replace him since. I don't count LeBron. Let's get it straight. But the NFL is trying to have their next big. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it right here. I'll, I'll pull the picture up. Brady, Breeze, Manning, Rivers, Big Ben all have retired. They put <laughs> Mahomes, Allen, Hubert, and um, Burrow as the heir apparent because they're trying to replace. And then they was funny for Bill Cosby for the Texans, where that was just hilarious to me. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to find that next usher of talent to put across everywhere. Just like the NBA right now, once Kawhi, George, LeBron, Melo, Chris Paul, once they leave, who's left in the NBA? I'm going to tell you something. If Burroughs win this Super Bowl, he'll knock Mahomes down a notch. I doubt that. He ain't did enough. Yes, he will. Actually, he would have did the exact same thing that Mahomes did. Come in, be, second season, so he'll do, the Super Bowl. He'll leapfrog over everybody else. He'll leapfrog over Josh Allen and all them. But my thing is – Leapfrog over – now, understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that he's better than Mahomes. I don't think he is. But he'll be perceived as. Weapon, but he will yeah, be perceived yeah, as yeah, better. You're right, you're right, you're and right. the NFL – NFL, who loves those golden boy quarterbacks like him, will mm -hmm. latch on to him. Yep. Let me let me throw it out like this. Yeah. Now now go back to that game against Buffalo. Let's say Mahomes couldn't have got it done in those thirteen seconds. We'd be having the same conversation, saying Josh Allen is perceived to be better than Mahomes. Yeah. Because he yep. finally got over the hump. Okay. So let, let me ask y'all this question. And Nelson, you know how our cousin Chris be on the conspiracies. He do. Do y'all think the NFL has slid things to where we about to get a Rams a ring to solidify a team in L.A.? I yes. hate to say it. I, yep, yes, I for two reasons. To, to solidify it. L.A. and because we don't want the taste of Brady being the only guy to win the home team Super Bowl. They love I'm telling you the NFL love big markets. Love it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Money. They just see money. Yeah. See money, money. I mean, that game was gonna be played in LA regardless. But guess what? If the Rams win it, yeah, that stadium is just packed. Charge just whatever they want to charge. And all the money that they didn't put into that team? Because yep. Look at the names they got. Yeah, Aaron Donald, Vaughn Miller, Jalen uh, Ramsey. I saw a video. I saw a video from the game Sunday, and that game, I got to give it to them, 49er fans traveled. Yeah. There it wasn't an empty seat in that well, stadium. Well, technically, they didn't travel that far. It's San Francisco, so they didn't travel that far. It wasn't like Pittsburgh saying, traveling. They was well, there. No, they was there is, I know this too, and this is not to knock the Chiefs. I have never seen that many of the opposite team in a Chiefs stadium. And I was seeing a nice little sprinkle of Bengals yeah. fans yeah, at that game. The Buffalo game, I saw hella Buffalo people tailgating, but when you saw the camera of the game, you just saw a sea of red. You couldn't even see them. But the Bengals, I give them credit because well, like Gary players. Yeah, because Gary Owen, you know, he's a big Bengals fan or whatever. And he was saying how it's been so long since they've had anything. So, like, the story was getting built up. And I give them fans props because they paid a nice penny for that ticket. That ticket was hard to come by and it wasn't cheap. I will admit, maybe it was because it was the AFC Championship game that, you know, they traveled like that. Yeah. But they was there. Yeah. It was easily, I'll say about 30% of the stadium was Bengal fans. I'm not going to lie to you because if my squad made it to the AFC Championship game, I'd drop three bills on the ticket. I'm not going to no, lie to you. No, it's the AFC Championship game. Okay, let's let's be real here. I ain't got that kind of bread. <laughs> <laughs> when my brother Leroy called me, he was like, man, how much are the tickets? And this was like beginning of the week. They was like 500 to 1500 
StubHub had them to where it was going up to down near 3000 for nosebleed. So them tickets was not cheap at all. I, I believe it. I mean, you know what? but them people have been waiting for 31 years. Yeah. 31 years. So if, if I save a dollar a day, I'll have 5000 <laughs> So, yeah, um, they let earned me, it. Let me get this out here, too. Let me get this one thing out here, and then I, I'm done bashing the Chiefs. I'm done. And it's really not even the Chiefs. It's their fans that irritate me. Exactly. Okay? I'm going I'm to read. Nelson's right, because y'all just like Patriot fans. So y'all are just like Patriot See? fans. And you saying Patriots, I was going to say Dallas fans. Because Dallas fans believe that Dallas can't do no wrong. I, but I, I want to read y'all this. I want to read y'all this because this makes me sick. This is just how pathetic Chiefs fans are. This is a post that's been going around. And, and I read this to Chiefs fans at my job who said that people that post this should be ashamed of themselves. This is a post that says, hashtag Chiefs Kingdom. Against all odds, we were never supposed to be here. We were never meant to make it this far. But against all odds, we did. What a season. Thank you for the incredible ride. We will what? always be Chiefs. Who yeah. said that? Who said that the Chiefs was bad? Who said that the Chiefs was so if, terrible if, that if they I'm wasn't going to make it? If I'm correct, at the beginning of the season, they said in the AFC West, who was supposed to finish in last place? Vegas. Who was supposed to finish in first place? Kansas City. Here's the thing. That's someone Kill I guarantee me. that's not a real football fan that ain't got on the bandwagon. I guarantee that could not have been a real fan. That is from NBC, ABC, Channel 9. Don't play with me. Our fans are so pathetic. I don't think that was legit. <laughs> I think like that was a bandwagon. And you part. did this too, Tay. I, could, I couldn't believe you did this. What? Ah, uh, well, you know, I still ride or die with my team. Yeah, my I still team. ride with my team regardless. The damn, we know it's your team. We know you ain't gonna jump ship. See, to me, when you do that, you sound like you doubting. Oh, okay, I, okay. You don't know, I can see that. You don't know if you're gonna be with your team next year. I hate yeah. when people do that. No, I, I get what you're saying. We're not that. giving you no sympathy. You talk trash all year. No, no I, I agree. I agree. Don't tell me that you ride or die because that, you know, just because you lost. No, you lost because you should have lost. Let me, let me tell you about the arrogance of Chief Fan. It starts before the game. What do they say during the national anthem? Land of the free, home of the... the they don't say brave. To. No, you're supposed to say brave. As if you want to, we ain't no land. Oh. We're home of the Chiefs. He, he, you're he, in our home. He, so, he, you know, there he is. Go, that, hey, you in our home. You just mad because they did it in Vegas and they drowned it out the team. But, hey, shit happens. We was there more than y'all was. Again, y'all finished it, no it better. Make me, played it, played it Cincinnati. Me You're right so on the couch. So mad. Mahomes was so mad. the nerve. Mahomes is on the couch next to Carr. He didn't want to go home to Ritney. He's sitting next to Carr. That, that, that's how bad he got beat. Hey, Choked. you just need to hold the nerve to try to ask for sympathy. <laughs> and y'all was supposed to be number one in y'all conference or whatever. And y'all talking about against all odds. What odds? Like I said. Pick the beach on the AFC. Whoever put that out was not a true fan. Because right. that irritates me. Unless I'm getting ready. To, lyric, I'm think. getting ready, ready to pose nothing. a question. I'm getting ready to pose a question to both of y'all. And I'm gonna start with my squad. Because my question is this: overall, for your team, was it a successful year or a disappointment? Against all odds, we were not supposed to be. In the playoffs, we were supposed to be dead in the water six weeks ago. We ran the table, won four in a row, got in. And you saw what happened to the Raiders this year. Anything that could happen did happen. Lost the coach, lost several players. A tragedy killed a, a person. They still rallied. They still got in. I say my squad had a successful year based on what they had to go through. Nelson, Eagles. What against all odds is, and go back and check the tape of the show. I said the Eagles would go nine and eight. The 
pundits and maybe the Chiefs fans said, oh, y'all ain't winning nothing. Y'all might win four games. What did they think? They said we win four games. They said we'd be last in our conference. We took second, and we went to the playoffs. That's against all odds. Yep. We wasn't even picked to do anything. We wasn't even picked to be better than anybody in our conference. That's against all odds. It shouldn't be for the Chiefs' kingdom. It should be for fly, Eagles, fly. So We overachieved. We underachieved. So, Kevin, was the Kansas City Chiefs season successful or disappointment? The way I see it, and I say it every year, if you don't win a ring, your season was trash. End of the day, it's about a championship. It's about nothing more, nothing less. You don't get a championship, your shit don't matter. Being a Knicks fan, we got a lot of second place rings. I don't give a fuck about that. We never won a championship. You don't win it all, it don't fucking matter. Well, I'll call my boy MJ. He got some to spare. You said what? I said I'll call my boy MJ. He got some rings to spare for y'all. Yeah, that's the reason I had why to tell, played another year. I had to tell my boy that, you know what, it's only one winner. Yeah. So you can talk all the trash you want about the Eagles, but you will be sitting down on the couch with me Sunday rooting on a team that's probably not your team. Yeah, I game agree. that your team is not playing in. Because let, let's keep it one and be truthful. Buffalo went to four straight Super Bowls. That team is not heralded until they did a 30 for 30 on them. Outside of right. that, they didn't get considered to be great. Why? Because they didn't win fucking rings. All the teams that are considered great have won rings. You don't want to win shit. Right. Now, our 2019 team. It will be considered great because of the offense, just like the Rams team back in the day that won because of the offense. The Baltimore teams that won, they're going to be considered great because of the defense. You don't get a ring. you just an average motherfucker. Nothing more, nothing less. All three of our teams pretty much finished tied because what? We didn't get a ring. That's what it boils down to. And just like I told our homie that you see me argue with on Facebook yeah. all the time, I told her. When she said, our team is better than your team. No. Not one Super Bowl win in the last five years like us. Yes. And I went a little deeper and I said, we we used to being relevant. Y'all not used to being relevant. Because we I always are, are contending. I disagree contending. with that. But, I you know, the, the, the true thing. Teams are equal with that. If you looking at it from the last five years, as far as being relevant, Carl Peterson years toward the end, we wasn't relevant because he was all about just making the playoffs. He didn't give a fuck if we win. He wanted the ticket sales. When Pioli came, relevance started coming, trying to put a better product out there. The Alex Smith days definitely was a better product, relevance. So I have to disagree with you on that. One. But see, I I gave. I gave her more relevance than that. Paul Peterson day was Marty Ball. Well, just switching gears, let's just – so all our teams took second place. I'm going to ask y'all, and we'll start with Nelson and see a guest. Put your, your GM hat on, what the Eagles need to do to be competitive next season. Because they're trying to knock your quarterback, and I think he could be good. He just need more time. I think that – he he do need more work. He needs to work on his timing. I saw, I mean, if I just saw a little plays where his timing is just off. He don't he don't have that where he can, I guess what they call it, where he can read that this is where the receiver is gonna be by the time he put the ball there. Yeah, that could be vision. Right. He don't have that yet. But I think we need need like a more consistent second we need linebackers let me start there we need some a good solid linebacker that's what i saw from ingram that the chiefs got he he, he put, changed things for us yeah he right. game changer. I, I know offense i think we need to i think i still believe in the possession receiver that's the the receiver that he's gonna catch it regardless 
Yeah, he's at third down. Receiver. Speed, right. We don't have a possession receiver. We just don't have it. I think we solid at running back. Just don't because Gainwell's not that bad. A lot of people don't realize he was a rookie this past season. Yeah. And then we have our starter Sanders. So I think we pretty good there. I think we good to go as far as quarterback, at least for him a couple more years. Let's see what he do. Because it's going to – you're not – let's just be honest. The Eagles ain't contending for no Super Bowl next year. This okay. is going to be another year of just making progress. We make – if we make the NFC Championship, that's overachieving. But if they if they win a game next year in the playoffs, now you're moving somewhere. You're moving with this group, you know. But I think they need – they need a couple more pieces, you know. Okay. So last question on your on your team. Five hundred above or below? I think based off of what they just did this year, they can't go below five hundred. They have okay. to be better than five hundred. Even though the teams they play, which got them to that nine win, I w- I'm willing to say six of the teams was crap. You okay. know. They still gotta win. They still gotta be above five hundred. Okay. All right, now, Richard, going to you, let me first say, I, I've said it to you, and I'm going to say it on here. Mark Davis dropped the ball on the coach. Y'all should see the love that he didn't got from all these players. Who y'all had as the interim should have just been ahead because that team believed and supported him. I think Barry and they supported group. I agree. You can see all this love. Here, here's so, here's I, where I'm afraid. Think, Gruden, was Gruden was a taskmaster. Gruden was a taskmaster. Uh, Basaccia was a player's coach, much like a Tony Dungy. Mm -hmm. That's why they fought for that man. This is where Josh McDaniels has to learn from his past mistake in Denver. Don't be a taskmaster. Don't try to be Bill Belichick Jr. Connect with the players. If you do that, they will have your back. Because this team, at one point, they were six and seven, dead in the water. They ripped off four straight wins. By the way, since we on here and we were talking about them bets from uh, several weeks back, yeah, I won, Kev, because we got them 10 <laughs> wins. I won, Kev, because we got in the playoffs. We'll settle up. But anyway, <laughs> they did that. There's no going back. You were, you were 10 and 7. You made it to the playoffs. If you can't repeat that at the very least, then it's not successful. So right. Answering the questions in reverse order, they got to be better than 500, definitely, because yep. they already proved that they can be. Now, going back to the first question, we need a speed receiver. Had one. He made a horrible, horrible life mistake. That cost him his career, and it hurt us in the long run. But if we get another speed receiver that can stretch that field, and Josh is the quarterback whisperer, what he did with that rookie in New England this year, Oh, my God. Now he's dealing with somebody who's been here for eight years, who knows how to play quarterback, who knows how to find an open receiver and can read the field. They should have a they should have, you know, just almost telepathy. Uh, If one knows what one wants to do, the other one should execute it. What the Raiders need to do, get that speed receiver and then spend every other draft pick on defense. Okay, yeah, one last question for you about the Raiders. I heard you saying about uh, McDaniels and he should do wonders with Carr. Carr's on his last year. What's the value of Carr? Because you have to pay him or you got to get rid of him. Glad you asked. Who's that number one free agent this year? A one Mr. Devontae Adams. Who does he want to play mm. with? Derek Carr. Damn. Oh, Remember... They were in Fresno State. Both but he of wants them. to play yeah. Rodgers first. And if Rodgers goes to Denver, Denver got the money. Rodgers may go to Tampa, but that's a whole nother thing. Uh, if he, that'd be wild if he went to Tampa. Now, if he goes to Tampa, then, yeah, Devontae Adams is going to Vegas. But if he goes to Denver, he's going to Denver because Green Bay has no money to tag him. Hey, so if they he, franchise tag win. him, if they franchise tag him, Mark Davis just needs to call him up. Hey, we'll give you a first and a third. No, that's go what I'm saying. It. Green Bay doesn't have the money to franchise tag. Yeah, because he wants 25 at the very minimum, 25 million a year. That's QB money ah. right there. 
Aaron's made him work that because all he throws to. Exactly. Now, the question I asked y'all as far as my squad, they should be over 500. Um, things we need to fix. And I think we need to go back. I think a lot of teams need to go back old school. We, it was hilarious. Hey, you was great. You're really not that dude like we thought. Let's no. send him home. McKinnon is y'all's dude. Yep. Yeah. But I I've think y'all found McKinnon, the running back. Since McKinnon been in the league, I've said it, when he's healthy, he can play. He's just been hurt everywhere. He's finally healthy. So we need to draft a running back that could be the one two with McKinnon. Gore. Give they, him enough of a chance. I like Gore. I don't know if they're going to let Gore progress up. That's the thing. Let me say this. You shouldn't draft the running back high. No, no, definitely not high. No. Our high picks need what, to What about point. using Edward Hilaire to spell McKinnon? Hilaire showed that he ran hard when he was worried <clears> about his job. How long does that go last? True. So it's one of the things where – I think we need to focus on defense. We got to get some more secondary. If we can bring Ingram back, that would be great. We're one linebacker away from having a dominant three set three set of linebackers because those two rookies balled out. We need just, we need one more linebacker, and we got to get a dog on the defensive line that'll get sacks. Because Chris Jones, this motherfucker get a toenail hurt, he's out the game. We get he's screaming sack nation. When's the last time you got a sack, nigga? My last few Big Macs ain't been because of you. Hey, while you're on that position, I want to give props to Max Crosby. Nobody yeah, thought he was going to be speaking. nothing. And between him and Unique Ngakwe, they balled out this year. And I didn't even really think of Ngakwe until I saw the final tally for He led the team in sacks. And I could swear that Crosby did. I'm not so, surprised they both hmm. balled. So, no, so let me ask you this. Me and uh, Rich talked about it before you got on. What's your thoughts on Flores and the lawsuit? I, I like what he said, which is he's risking his NFL career. Yeah. But you know what? I, this is one thing I say, and people might hate it. It's always been something crooked to me about John Elway. You know, kind of just, just iffy about him. And I know it's not all about John Elway. But he's always been like one of them good old boys. Yeah, but he's a good old boy. One of them, one of them, you know. Uh, what's my boy in Dallas? I said, he's the reason I can't stand Dallas. Aikman. Jerry Jones. Oh, Jerry yeah. Jones. Oh, yeah. they got Jerry That's Jones. That's because I, Jerry Jones wants to be, he wants to be Al Davis so bad. Just because you got money don't mean you can do it. I don't think he want to be Al Davis. I don't think Jerry Jones ever been told no. I think that's the problem. He's always gotten what he wants, how he wants it. But that's the thing. Al, the Al, Al, Al got what he wanted, but Al did it his way. Jerry Jones tries to buy it his way. But that's the thing. To buy it. He bought the team for pennies on the dollar and never looked back. And he got spoiled with those Super Bowl wins. I kind of uh, got off. I kind of got off a little bit from Flores, but I think. If, it, if it's true, yeah, he need to sue him. Because, number one, he should have never been fired. Not at all. No way he should have been fired. But I, what, what, what I think you're going to see is that that owner, his ties to Michigan, his, his loyalty to Michigan, it didn't matter if Flores won 12 games. If Hardball is, was available, that's who he wanted. He's a Michigan man. Yeah, and I right. think I, I think his ties to that was just so strong. He's willing to risk it. He's willing to, you know, I don't care. If it has nothing to do with black or white. I'm loyal to Michigan. Yeah, loyal and, and you know, so, what? here's my thing. I don't fault owners for that kind of thing. I mean, if you look at Davis, we had Del Rio. We were one year removed from a playoff appearance, but. As soon as they were able to talk Gruden back into uh, returning to coaching, the writing was on the wall. So you, yep. your guy is your guy. So whoever you want to be your guy, I get that, but it's how you go about it. Uh, the Giants blatantly used the Rooney rule to just say, oh, we, we interviewed our black guy, but right. with the other guy. So 100% he needs to sue on that front. 
You know what I say too? Who the heck is Byron Luckwich not getting interviews? Not nope. even being looked at as a top candidate. No, he's had two interviews. Todd Bowles. Leftwich has had two interviews. Jacksonville and the Saints. He's going to get one of those jobs. He should be an automatic soul man. What about uh, uh, Jacksonville? What about I agree. BNB? Jacksonville should be a no-brainer. They should be like, hey, we don't need to interview you, bro. Just take the job. Well, this is the thing I hear about B. Enemy. People have been saying that he's a terrible interviewer. Yeah. And that's what's hurt him. And I and the reason why I tend to believe that all these jobs that he like interviewed for last year, before this season, uh-huh. he never got a second interview. Which is odd to me. Yeah. So it's like it carries it carries a little weight that maybe he's not good at interviewing. Uh, mm. Keyshawn said it best on the enemy. He was like, like you said, the enemy's terrible at interviewing because he's probably nervous because it's not a lot of us. He said the problem is the ones he interviewing with aren't us to realize mm-hmm. look at what he's done on the field versus what he's doing in here. You want to worry about the product on the field versus – how he, you know, how he, this interview goes. And since it's not us doing an interview, we just, all right, well, we did what we needed to do next person. And the person who comes in and knows how to interview, you're going to like them much better than the one that's fumbling over things. Even though on the field, he has the better, uh, he has the better stats than the one that can interview. I truly, I truly I- believe that that's why we get so many duds that get hired as head coaches because they go in blowing smoke during these interviews. They talk so much stuff that they end up landing the job, and then one or two years later, they fall flat on their face. Look at Urban Meyer. Yeah, See, I, th- I, 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 I just don't un- – don't, I think the firings I don't understand that you don't see the white coaches. You don't see the firings like the coach that just got fired in Texas. The Texans. One season. Expect yeah. him to do something. Flores, what do you have in Miami? It's defense about if Tua is really an <laughs> NFL-worthy starter quarterback. What did he have, you know, and you fire him? See, it's those type of firings mm-hmm. that make people believe that these owners are, let's just say it, racist. Yeah. You know? Still the good old boys club. Until we get some black owners, it ain't going to yeah. change. But you will go get a coach like, and I like Kingsbury. You go get him from college where he did nothing. He did absolutely nothing. He didn't win a conference championship. He didn't win a bowl game. He did nothing. Go get him. You give him a job. He won the interview, so he won the job. Right, but any of us you think are winning interviews. As they said about Denver, they was like Denver's. They was like, granted, Denver's plan to get riders. They was like, but the head coach, remember, his dad was Paul Hackett, who worked for the Chiefs and other teams. Said he's been in those rooms before, so he knows how to play the game. Unfortunately, we're not in those rooms, and this is where I wish Dungy and other black coaches would get all the the coordinators that are up for it. Hey, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to approach it. And I think we will see a change or we will put a little bit more pressure for it to be to hire a black coach. But if you still don't know what to do and how to maneuver, it's going to be done. But like, okay, but this is why I know it's a good old boys club. How is it that Dallas's offensive coordinator is looked at as a top candidate? When Dallas is loaded on offense, to come in there and call plays for them. Oh, here's the thing. He's not a bad quarterback. Last, you got three stellar receivers, and you got a you got two running backs. Yeah. And a tight end that was coming into his own. And saying, oh, he's a top candidate. Just to, me? to piggyback on that, Winslow's first year as coordinator was last year, right? Before he even called the play, they were saying he's next to be a head coach. Mm. See, ridiculous. Ridiculous. You know? 
And I, and and if he's a top candidate, then you know when B Enemy first hit the scene and the Chiefs was loaded, well, how is B Enemy not a top candidate? How does he don't have a job? Because they'll always say, "Well, that's Reed's offense." My, then I was about to touch that because I always watch Max, uh, Jay, and Keyshawn in the morning sometimes, and Max made the mistake and said, "Well, maybe Eric needs to go elsewhere." and be an offensive coordinator and show that he could do what he did in Kansas City. When I tell you Keyshawn lit his ass up and was like, <laughs> well, the coach of the Bears who got fired, the Eagles that got fired, they either one of them have to go elsewhere from Andy Street, they left Kansas City and got coaching jobs. And I didn't realize Andy, uh, after that Buffalo game, let it be known that Eric calls the plays to try to help, you know, the interviews or whatever, because he's gotten like two interviews or whatever with Denver and somewhere else. And so it was just like Keyshawn said point blank, there's no reason he should have to go somewhere else and coach. Only reason why he's not getting his opportunity, because like you said, Nelson, he doesn't interview well because he's never been in those rooms before. And then and then Keyshawn said, and I give him great one to be PC because he wanna keep that ESPN check. He said point blank, you look at him, you look at the, uh, the who got the coach, what's different? Now, See, my boy Spears, he said it best on ESPN. Mm -hmm. Big Spears that used to play with Dallas. Big Swagoo. He said, yeah, Big Swagoo. He said, you know what? It'll get serious when we have to stop needing stuff like the Rooney Rule. He said, my, he said, his whole thing is, why do we need it? If, if It don't matter what color it is. If, if you got the talent, you should get the interview. That's how it should be. As far you know, as I'm concerned, the only one that got the interview, the, the Rooney Rule interviewing thing right, were the Rooneys when they hired Tomlin. Yep. They went out and got the best man for the job. And that's, All right, and that's probably why it's the Rooney Rule. And yes. speaking of Tomlin, y'all can tell if y'all agree or not. This Pittsburgh team is not a typical Pittsburgh Tomlin team. Your quarterback done left. All the players you have coached have left. Chicago, should Tomlin pull a cower? and go ahead and ride off into the sunset. He's still relatively young, and if coaching is in his blood, I'm going to say no. Go on ahead and get ready for that first losing season so that you can reshape the team into your season. identity because it needs to be reshaped Tomlin, into his identity. Tomlin's in his 40s, right? Uh, I think mid to late 40s, yeah. Yeah, yeah late 40s. I think, I think he should stay in coaching. Does he need to show these good old boys I'm a black guy and I'm a good coach? And, and oh, by the way, I still haven't had a losing season. And, speaking and I'm of, quite sure that there's some other brothers out there or sisters. I mean, they're trying to be diverse. I'll, I'll do you one better. Some. I'll do you one better because now that we have the quote-unquote 17-game season, it's impossible to finish 500. So if Tomlin takes this team one game above 500 next It'll season, yes, then you, man, you got to say, hey, don't worry about color. This man then did it for how many years? Yeah. All right. So since we we football heavy right now, we know the Super Bowl is Bengals versus Rams. We we two weeks away. Right now, who you picking? And do you got a point? You got points. I do. I'm going with the Rams. And I am going to say 35-27, Rams. Mm. Nelson? I'm going to say Rams. And I'm going to say it's going to be, I like 35, but I think it's going to be like 35-20. Okay. And my, we'll and my reason for that is, Aaron Donald against that Cincinnati offensive line. This he finna throw. He's finna throw some interceptions. He's finna take some sacks. Man, that <clears throat> interception that he calls Garoppolo to throw when he yeah. was and carried, trying to take him down. Aaron Donald's gonna go down as one of the best defensive tackles the game has ever seen. Now here's yep. one thing that they said that I I caught. I think it was was it Collinsworth that said it. During that game, they said Aaron Donald does not normally talk or address the rest of the team. But during that game and the pregame, 
he was the most vocal that he's been all season. That tells yeah, you yeah, how he was. Well, he's very quiet and humble. I, I didn't watch like a lot of that game. I didn't watch a lot of that game. But when I did turn to the game, I saw him jumping down the defense's throat yeah. on the sideline. I never seen him do that. It was like the only thing he's missing from his greatness is a ring. Yeah. Yep. So he's, you know, because he knows at some point you're going to go downhill. So he's trying to get it while he's up top. Now, I will say it's going to be a 2010 game, Rams. Defense is going to win it. I have no faith in Matthew Stafford. And I'm <laughs> I'm bothered by the Rams going because I don't want to hear, look how great Stafford is, and be, they be little Megatron. Because they had yeah. already started trying to sell that narrative or whatever. Already. But remember, if the Bengals win, look how great Burrow is. So you, you're going to get the next golden boy in the NFL see, regardless. The Burrow thing – they ain't had a quarterback since Boomer Esiason. Okay. Andy Who, by Jones, the way, was the only one that was... picked to win the game against Kansas City. You said what? Boomer was the only commentator to pick them to win against Kansas City. Well, I mean, that's – if you know all these commentators, they pick they homer team. I expect them to do that. And Boomer been hating on us all year, so that's no surprise. But – But you know what? People would be idiots to try to try to act like Megatron was the reason they wasn't winning. I mean, he got Cooper Cup, who's a triple crown winner, okay? Mm-hmm. You got Odell Beckham Jr., who's probably on the back end of his uh, prime, but he still can catch. He's I like the you. fact that – you I got think a young, was, fast Jefferson. When it was on, I think it was Rub. on Get Up, they said it perfectly. They said point blank, you needed a dumb team being Cleveland – to release back him so you could get him because if you didn't have him, granted what Cub is doing, you wouldn't be going to the Super Bowl without Odell. Yeah, because as soon as Woods went down, it didn't look good for the Rams. Because yeah, Odell's not a number one right. anymore. He is a damn good number two. When yeah. your number one's a 1A, Odell's probably a 1C. And he does what you want every number two to do, and he don't complain or nothing. He was doing that in Cleveland. He let his boy be the number one. But when you ain't got a quarterback, what can you do? Right. And, you know, and, and they got a tight end. Yeah. yeah. Not a bad tight end. I mean, that. can you think of when Detroit was loaded like that? Detroit has never really been, quote, unquote, loaded. They've had a couple of star players here and there, but they squandered opportunities going all the way back to Barry Sanders. So you got Barry Sanders for as long as had Megatron. Sanders, they, they didn't put anything around him. Now, like, it, I won't come down as hard on y'all, I mean, on Stafford as y'all will, because I looked at the numbers and y'all know Carr is my dude. The next closest quarterback to compare him to is Matt Stafford. If you look at their numbers, they are damn near identical all the way down. So, I, I, here for the finally Matthew Stafford has made it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> really? That, that's what we're doing? I he mean, but okay. Fight. Let's look at it like this. He the two best quarterbacks out of the four teams that just played they were playing against each other. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows Garoppolo is not that good. No, but you not. ain't nobody gonna tell me that Stafford is better than Burrow better than my home. No. Somebody tell me that they crazy. Yeah, I agree. That's what they was just like, oh, Stafford. I'm like, Stafford had Megatron, so don't act like he was throwing a bunch of bums. You like, know what Stafford is? God. Stafford is exactly like they said he is. He is a notch up from Jared Goff. Yeah. That's what he is. He's a better option than Jared Goff. Now, and just the thing, think, though, Jared Goff took that's, that's all they far. needed. That's all they needed. Took Jared, the Goff, Jared Goff took him to the Super Bowl. Right. If, if he had it. any kind of arm, they could have won that Super Bowl because that was one of the lowest scoring Super Bowls around. Yep. So quit trying to give Stafford all of this. Now, my, my next is question. All that. Are y'all watching the Super Bowl is my next question. Yeah. 
I, I got to get my football in. I got, uh, you know, it's the last game of the season and I don't have any investment in either team, but I just want to watch a good game. And the Pro Bowl is not honest. that. I'll be totally honest. I checked out of football when the Eagles lost. That, I'm, I don't care what nobody say. No, they wasn't expected to beat Brady now. I had a better game plan than the Eagles did when I came on the show. <laughs> they That loss, they felt like they took my soul. Okay. And so no. I cling to my Golden State Warriors. So I've been gone. See. But I've been, like, checking it. I haven't watched whole games. I've been peeping in and watching games here and there. And that's where I am now. My squad lost. Football's done for me. I may watch a snippet of Zubo. I give a fuck about the halftime. Because what do you do with 11 minutes? You know, I can give a fuck about Dre and I've got the minutes. I don't want to hear three words out of every song. So I can care less about Super Bowl. <laughs> then I can't go to the NBA because the Knicks are back to being below average. So I'm just done with sports, period, now. I'm going to go have tea with my daughters to kill time. March Mad- I tried to start back watching college because I like to pick the game for March Madness, but I don't know who it's so is. wide open. Yeah. College, wide open. college basketball right now has no stars. It's just a bunch of niggas playing with a few white boys. That's right, That's true. They have no stars. I'm a Kentucky fan. And, you know, I support them because they're the home team. I'm tired of seeing them. You get they ass will buy a point to everybody. I'm like, damn, yep. y'all can hit two more free throws? Or MU will play a top five team, barely win, and then play a team that's in the, the lower hundreds and get blown out by 20. Yeah. Oh, so, Nelson, question for you. Because, you know, me and you, we go way back like four flats on the Cadillac on that black campus. <laughs> what do you think GSU going to do with the coach that they got? Will it be the Dion effect? I don't know if – you know what? I, I hate to say this about Gremlin, but one thing that I think Fobbs lacked was that was that shine. You know, people came to that game to see Gremlin, to see Gremlin but they came to see Eddie Robb too. Mm-hmm. Eddie Robb was equal with the team. They didn't have that with Fobbs. Fobbs didn't do that bad, and I mean, hit a – Hit a little slide where they, they, I think they've had like two losing seasons. But come on, they, they were, uh, they want to, you know, with us, we care about the Bayou Classic. Yeah. They have been, they was at least 500. Bayou Classic, they win one, they lose one, you know, that, but let's just be honest, the SWAC wasn't even really competing against the MIAC at all. The SWAC was what? Proof in the pudding was Deion Sanders them got blew out. A team in the MEAC that wasn't even really that great. That South Carolina State team. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think they went for name. Yeah. Name. Because, I mean, it's, I don't know how well he could coach on the college level. He wasn't that great in, in NFL. He wasn't that great with the Raiders, was he? Right with, he should uh, never got fired by the Raiders. He had a good record. He should have never got fired. Uh, I, yeah, I, I agree. But I, I, go back to Eddie Robinson real quick. All right, this is what I'm going to say, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, because y'all would know best. He and, and you did say he was one of the attractions. Mm-hmm. Would you say that he was the equivalent collegially of Joe Paterno was in Penn State? He was bigger than Joe Paterno in my opinion. He was bigger. I was about to say he was okay. bigger. Okay. And when Joe tarnished his image, it made Eddie Robb that much uh, greater. Okay. Eddie Robb was a college version of Bill Belichick for his respect. You know how respected he was his last game of the season? It was a complete rainstorm, and that stadium was packed. He was soaked, but they had that much respect for him. And he was so respectful, he walked the campus. I'm not going to say people looked at him as a god, but he, he was like everybody's favorite uncle or something, you know? He talked to you. He signed whatever ball you want, signed whatever autograph. He was just a great guy. Great okay. guy with a great coach in mind. Now, we only got probably should have been on the Division One level. 
We only got a few minutes left. I want to jump back to the NFL because this is one that we didn't touch on. We did touch on the QBs, Brady, mm-hmm. Breeze, Manning, Roethlisberger, and even Phillip Rivers. Um, four out of the five do have Super Bowl rings. Now that they're all officially retired, well, Brady's getting ready to make it official so he can get that bonus. Mm-hmm. Who's first ballot Hall of Famer? Who's not? We'll start with Brady. That's the easiest one. Yeah, that's that's a it's no 2022. Point. So in 2027, is he first ballot? I think we all agree. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Drew first ballot except for Rivers. I, I disagree. I think Eli Manning is second year. I think Eli, Eli is second. Rings, he first ballot. No. He got two rings, but he's known for the helmet catch. He's two when, rings, though. when your quarterback is known for the receiver catching the ball and not you gunslinging it. It's not, he's not Peyton. He's two rings and he's Mr. New York. But he's not he's Peyton. But he's not Peyton. Don't matter. He got players. Hey, he won. led. He led the league in interceptions most of the years in his career. Yeah, true. But he's still Mr. New York. He got players that will look at the to. That's my quarterback. That are Hall of Famers. He's first. Oh, and honestly, in my opinion. I don't even think he should get in. He was an average quarterback. I think he'll I mean, get in. On, I think those two rings ball? will get him in, but he'll get in in the second year of eligibility. I think that's the only reason why he gets in, though. It's oh, not no, going to be because yeah. of his career. Yeah, the rings get him in. I mean, yeah. and I mean because I, I saw this stat. I was looking at this like a few months ago. McNabb's stats was better than Eli Manning, and it wasn't even close. Now, that's the question right there. Does McNabb get in at any point? No. They do is a sympathy. Yeah, it's a he's, sympathy he's, because they he's put been a eligible. Black qu- yeah, he's been right. eligible. He gets in is because of sympathy of putting a black, making themselves look good to put a black quarterback in. All right. No. Nope. Well, Drew Brees. Gears real quick, since we got five minutes left. We're talking about Hall of Fame or whatever. Drew Brees. Did MLB deal with this service that Barry didn't get in? No, because McGuire didn't get in either. It's still that st- that steroid scandal. Yep, McGuire and it, it, who else? Uh, the Sammy. Rocket, Roger. Clemens didn't get in. Yeah. Uh, See, the thing is, though, this, this is my argument to that. Clemens, McGuire, Sammy, they all failed and got caught. Barry never got caught. It was always alleged. But Barry has always had a bad attitude. Yeah, that's, you piss, yeah, when you I piss off the right the people, problem is. when you yeah, piss off the right people, that. yeah. You know, it, one thing my dad said that I think if Barry had a good attitude, it would have got him in. Yeah. Although he might have used uh, some kind of enhancing drug, my dad always said this. It don't help you see that baseball. It don't. It, you know, it don't. You still got to hit the ball. Yeah. Yeah, because Deion posted his Deion Sanders posted his numbers supposedly before he used the clear, whenever he used it, and his numbers were still light years better than everybody else. So he was already beasting. It's just at some point he just got abnormal. He turned to a mutant and turned into X, he turned to Wolverine and just started killing the ball. Yeah, you couldn't, you could everybody was walking him. You couldn't. You couldn't put that ball nowhere near the plate without him hitting it out. Very true. Very true. And and I'll say this, compare it with what we were just talking about with Eli. Barry Bonds was Mr. San Francisco. That didn't get him in. You said Eli was Mr. New York. That's true. But that's that's why Eli will get in, but it won't be first ballot. I think Eli is going to get in because he's a Manning. Philip Rivers yeah. will not get in on the first ballot. Yeah, Philip Rivers second ballot. Second. He's he may second, not get he may not get in on the quick. second ballot. And here's the reason why. Look at this class of quarterbacks that are here. If any of them are still hanging around and they miss the first ballot for any reason, they're going to get in before Rivers. The only did Rivers one, ever think... make it? Did Rivers ever make it to a Super Bowl? Nope. nope. No I'm Super Bowl or with Dan Marino, because I think Dan Marino made a Super Bowl at least, right? Yeah, he made one in the '80s. No, Marino may have made two Super Bowls. He just never won. Right. I was gonna put Rivers with Dan Marino, but he never. 
he I think he only made what a, a couple AFC championships. Yeah. Rivers is in the Jim Kelly Dan Marino class. Even though Kelly went to those Super Bowls, but we know that was Thurman reading that defense. Yeah, that team was stacked. Yeah, so Rivers is in that class. So, like I said, depending on who falls, because Big Ben might possibly not be first ballot, and that would knock him down to third, because Ben will go in before Rivers. Right. So it's like Rivers and Eli is going to be jockeying each other. Just like right now. You don't now, think Big got, is what? You don't think Big Ben is the first? It depends. Depending on who he's up against. Well, it's clear who he's going to be up against. He's going to be uh, up against whoever slips down because the guys we mentioned before him, other than uh, Brady, have already been retired for a year or more. Yeah. Brady and him are both retiring this year. But definitely all of them are going to get in, and it's going to be like solidifying that draft of quarterbacks. Yeah. Like all those ones from 87 that were big, they all got in, and the league loves that shit. That's why they're trying to do all these young quarterbacks now. They're the every, great, they're going, they're the next big time. Every draft class is going to be compared to Marino, Kelly, uh, Elway, and uh, who else was in that draft class? It don't matter. The Chiefs drafted Ty Blackledge. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> okay, now y'all got me thinking. If Rivers get in, it's a strong possibility McNabb could get in. That's why I asked. All right, well, I guess we, by the way, less than a minute, we'll just yeah. end on that note. McNabb will get in. Nelson, thank you for joining us. Everybody have a good one. Fuck the Super Bowl. Don't holler, holler at your boys. Just don't yell. Stay positive. Whatever. Stay blessed. Thanks, Nelson. And the home of the Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather say home of the Pigeons. I mean, the Eagles, I say that shit. Whatever. Hey. Hey, anything's better than the Commanders. That's true. <laughs> Washington <laughs> Commies. I'll let you both. <laughs> Later, everybody. Right, Later, y'all.